a great honor to be here. Um, I'm Xiaoming Wan from the Institute of Geographic Sciences and Natural Resources Research. Um, my topic today is phytoremediation techniques guarantee uh, food safety in high geologic background area. Um, and I think everybody knows that about the potentially toxic elements. Um, there are different kinds of sources of potentially toxic elements. But after they went into the soil, uh, it might cause health risks to human beings and also the environment. So in China, this is the map, the left one is the geochemical map of cadmium, one of the potentially toxic elements, and the right one is the cadmium concentration in the soil. So we can see that actually both the geochemical high concentration and also the high concentration of cadmium in the soil, many distributed in the southern part, like Guizhou, Yunnan, and Guangxi. So we can see that high concentrations of potentially toxic elements in soil were commonly found on geological high background area. And some people may think that if it's just caused by the high background value, then why should we care about it? Because they think that it might be immobile. But actually, it's not the truth. And studies have found that um, if, if we plant like vegetables uh, in those high background area, there is still a high risk of those um, like cadmium to be mobilized while weathering soil acidification and the cycle of oxidation and the reduction. And then finally, they may go into the food chain and produce a potential health risk. Another reason for us to focus on the geologic high, back, high background value is that um, this is also the uh, a Chinese map and it's a distribution of non-ferrous metal and also the distribution of watersheds. And we can see that still the distribution of non-ferrous metal mining area and also the heavy rainfall area and the coastal areas, they all like distribute in the southern part. And there is a very high exceeding rate of the uh, soil PTEs concentration. So in these areas, it's possible for those um, PTEs in the high background value to migrate. Um, so there is a there is a characteristic of PT pollution um, to be distributed along the watershed, like higher in the upper stream and lower in the downstream. So our main aim is to uh, to ensure that the health risks of PTEs in the high background value area is controllable. So actually we did some work about the risk evaluation, risk prediction, and finally risk control. But today due to the time, I'll mainly talk about the risk control. And in our topic, it, it says about the phytoremediation. So phytoremediation is our main technique to deal with the risks caused by potentially toxic elements. And actually there are three different kinds of phytoremediation technologies, including phytoextraction, uh, intercropping and phytobarrier, or we also call it phytoexclusion. And I will talk about the three different technologies. So for phytoextraction, take arsenic as an example. Um, we plant the arsenic hyperaccumulator terrace vita, this kind of fern, and we plant it. It can accumulate extremely high concentrations of arsenic in its above ground parts. And then we can harvest this fern and then the, uh, ex the, the arsenic in the soil can be removed. This is the general cycle of this technology. And actually, we established our, our, our group established the internationally first phyto extraction project in Hunan province. And we can see that before, because this area is, is I think it's a smeltering place. So it's heavily contaminated. And so before the remediation, actually no plants can grow there. And we plant uh, this fern for several years and the arsenic concentration gradually decreased. Um, and this is the comparison of arsenic concentration distribution in different years, we can see a gradual decrease of arsenic in soil. Um, and now in China, this federal extraction technology has already been applied to uh, nearly 20 sites. And actually, we're not alone in the other countries, including the USA and in Australia. There are also some cases using arsenic hyperaccumulator to extract arsenic from the soil. 
So the second phytoremediation technology is a phytoexclusion or phytobarrier, uh, which is kind of the opposite of the phytoextraction. In this condition, we plant low accumulating crops which means this, this kind of special varieties or species, they accumulate very limited amounts of uh, PTs in their above ground parts or the, um, like the, the food parts. So we have screened like 30 low accumulating varieties, including rice, maize, and also some other plants. And we, we, Planting low accumulating variety alone, so no other measures, it can result in a 28.4% decrease in ketamine concentration and also a 16.2% increase in yield because the toxicity of the ketamine is alleviated, so the yield is increased. And if we add other application of supporting measures, like we add the passivator, like we do some water management, this decrease extent can be further improved. Other than rice, we also did some low accumulating screening and application project of other crops like the brassica, uh, which we can produce the, this, the, the seeds of this plant to be oil. Uh, and also some fruits, those the the right one, this little fruit, it's it's nice. Um, and the last one, the last two factor remediation technology we are using is intercropping, which is kind of the combination of the above two different technologies. So we plant hyperaccumulator uh, used in factory extraction, and we we plant hyperaccumulator and the low accumulating crop together. In this condition, we can see there is, um, uh, I think it's an illustration about how the underground parts of these two different plant species may interact. Uh, for the hyperaccumulator, it can actively like, like forage those PTEs uh, and then it can lower the concentration of PTEs in the rhizosphere of the crops. So in this way, it can increase the concentration of PTs in the hyperaccumulator, but decrease the PTs concentration in the crops. So this is the basic mechanism of the intercropping. And we have tried to intercrop arsenic hyperaccumulator with mulberry tree, and we can see that the, the, the right picture, we can see that the the hyperaccumulator could clearly lower the concentration of arsenic in the rhizosphere of the mulberry tree. And another kind of intercropping is rotation. For intercropping, we plant two different plants together at the same, same time, but for rotation, we produce one plant first, and then we plant the, and we harvest this one, and then we plant the other one. And we can see that under this condition, it can uh, improve the land utilization rate, rate, of course, and then we can also improve the yield and the nutritional quality of crops. At the same time, the cadmium concentration in the food is decreased, so we can ensure the crop safety production. And this is the, the one of our biggest projects. It's a case in Shimen in Hunan province. And this is the area. And we can see that before the remediation, the overstanded rate of rice and vegetables, they are really high. So we have we have made investigations on the on the PTE's concentration and the distribution in this area, and we established our remediation plan, including phyto extraction using the arsenic hyperaccumulator alone, and also phyto exclusion using the low accumulating rice and the maize, and we also intercropped the hyperaccumulator with citrus, another field. And this is our uh, brief introduction of our remediation results. And we can see that um, before the remediation, uh, nearly 70% exceed the food safety standards. But after remediation, actually both cabbage, Chinese cabbage and crown daisy, they all meet the food hygiene standards. So which means that this, the, this combination of different technologies could really solve the problem in that area. So that's what I, um, I'm talking about the, today's phytoremediation and our application of it on different areas. Thank you for your attention.